Drop Dead Fred. Oh boy, what can I say about this one? Well, before I get into reviewing this weird, twisted bitch of a movie, let me give you another one of my very good old history lessons. Now, back in 1982, there was a new sitcom on BBC called The Young Ones. It starred some of the funniest comedians in Britain. Adrian Edmondson, Rick Mile, Nigel Planner, Christopher Ryan, and that other guy who always acted like he was drunk. I'm not really foreign, you know. I just do it to appear more sophisticated. <laughs> the show was funny, but also really random, and had a lot of jokes that just made no freaking sense. You should have been here earlier. I hold and won. Mind you, I was playing pinball in the clubhouse. There's also this punk rocker, Vivian, who has a pet hamster that talks. There are big-lipped alligator moments left and right. And what's even worse, Rick never shuts up. Fascist! After The Young Ones was cancelled in 1986, the cast went out to do other projects. Both Rick and Adrian went on to create a new sitcom called Bottom, Nigel Planner started appearing in several West End shows, and Christopher Ryan also made a few appearances, such as playing Lord Kive in Doctor Who. You know, that ugly bastard from the Mind Warp series? I don't know, I'm just reading what's on the card. Just before his success on Bottom, Rick Mile made appearances in numerous sitcoms, commercials, movies, etc. But his biggest movie star role was the 1991 comedy Drop Dead Fred. Since then, this movie has been considered a cult classic. More like a cunt classic! This movie is terrible. Now, Rick Mile can be funny. If you watch him on The Young Ones, Bottom, The Comic Strip, The New Statesman, it's all hilarious. But he's not a great actor. His routine just consists primarily of screaming, cursing, political satire. That's it. He's pretty much a second-rate actor, if you can call it that. So what happens when you put a second-rate actor into a movie that's run by a first-rate movie company like New Line Cinemas? What a pile of shit. Charles, this is really important to me. So the protagonist of this movie is a meek and rather shy young woman named Lizzie Cronin, played by Phoebe Cates. To put it short, her life sucks. Her car gets stolen, she loses her job, and her husband cheats on her. All in just one lunch hour. Even her childhood wasn't all that good. She always seemed to be blamed for incidents that she says weren't her fault. She keeps saying that her imaginary friend Drop Dead Fred did it all. And let me tell you, these so-called incidents are just horrible. Oh, Grandma, bun. Drop dead Fred. After losing her job, her friend Janie, played by Carrie Fisher, tries to offer her some Pain advice. Pain is your friend. It's your humanity. Pain makes you interesting, Janie. Look at Elvis. Yeah, but didn't Elvis kill himself? Yes, but before that, he was very, very interesting. I feel basically it's all about choice. And since you've already chosen, what you may as well do is to choose what you chose. Thank you, Dr. Joyce Brothers. So Lizzie moves back into her old house with her mother and goes into her old room, which reeks of pinkness with a hint of the 80s. She goes through her closet and almost immediately discovers an old jack-in-the-box. Then later that night, when she's sleeping, the box starts going space monkey crazy. She then proceeds to rip open the tape holding the box shut and... Until you've seen her topless at Fast Times at Ridgemont High. <laughs> so Fred is now released back into Lizzie's world and proceeds to do his bastardly tricks. 
destroying all of her dolls, and then doing this. Mr. Pooh! Hello! You die too! No, no, no! Yes, yes, yes! Wow! Wow! My intestines! Not my intestines! So, yeah, this is pretty much what Rick Miles like in all of his other shows. But in his other shows, he's funny. Here? Not as much. The rest of the scene consists of Fred doing a bunch of stupid, awful, random stuff. Like picking his nose and rubbing it on Lizzie, tracking dog shit in the house, and spilling ink on the floor. And the next morning, Lizzie's mother is left cleaning up Fred's mess that she believes was made by Lizzie. So then she starts having her coffee and, oh, who decides to show up as well? So, who's the snot flicking? It is! The Mega Bitch! And that pretty much sums up the movie right there. So, I'm done. What do you mean? What do you mean I have to keep reviewing the movie? What did... Damn you, SPG! Now, being that Fred is Lizzie's imaginary friend, she's the only one who can see or hear him. He's invisible to everyone else, including her mother. And that can be a bit of a disadvantage at some points. My head! My God, he's transformed into Stewie Griffin. Then after that, we get an onslaught of tasteless, juvenile, stupid jokes and gags until eventually, Fred gets hit by a fire truck, putting us out of our misery. Or has it? No, it hasn't. Not in the slightest. We then get a flashback of Lizzie, as a kid, where she and Fred try to plan a burglary inside her own house. <laughs> oh no! Then at one point, Lizzie gets too close to a plant she's allergic to and sneezes, blowing Fred away in one of the worst blue screen effects I've ever seen. But her parents think that someone really is trying to rob their house and call the police. And seriously, do they not bother trying to check on their daughter to see that she's okay? What kind of parents are these? Anyway, the scene ends with Lizzie's dad mistaking a police officer as the burglar and ends up getting arrested. What a scene.